I'm so bummed out right now. <sighs> I just deleted something off the microphone that I needed. I'm sorry. I hate myself. It's okay, we can... I mean, I think that uh, the sound from the camera is good. Anyway, hello everyone. Hi. Are you sure you want to be this washed out? Because I look like the freaking sun. Yeah, no, it's a bit too much. You asked for it. No, no, no it has to be balanced. <laughs> it was just Otherwise like... Otherwise, you, you're going to be like a little ghost. <laughs> I'm already okay. a little ghost. Okay. Yeah. So, welcome everybody to our channel and... Last night it was a lunar eclipse and I noticed something lunar and it was full moon, it was everything, okay, that you can imagine. Really? Uh, basically the moon was opposed to the sun and the earth was in the middle, so we had a lunar, full lunar eclipse. And uh, it was full moon and uh, I noticed something that every time, I don't know about you guys following us, you can comment. But every time it's full moon, or the three days before, the three days after in this period, I do not sleep. Like I wake up in the middle of the night. Usually I sleep throughout the night. Mm -hmm. But around the time when there is full moon, I do not sleep well. How about you? I didn't know that was a thing. But I, I don't think it's a thing. I mean, it's my thing. I don't oh, know okay. if it's a thing. No, I don't think so, because I've never had that again experience yeah okay anyway we wanted to talk to you about friendship no what was, what was it that you want to talk about I don't know. okay I let's put it out yeah like that. Put it. i mean i think we talked about this a lot but if you have something new to say i don't know I, my, my question is can you be friend when you are in a relationship is there friendship and what is friendship and what is a romantic relationship can these two things coexist you want me to answer that? Yeah. Well, of course. I mean, I consider you to be my only friend, basically. So, if you can't, then I'm screwed. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, I think that uh, I see many couples where there is the romantic involvement, but um, the friendship is no longer there. Okay. Maybe it might be at the beginning, but it's no longer there. And But how do you define friendship? What is it that is considered friendship. For me, when I have a very, very good friend, I feel free to go to that friend every time I am going through some, some rough times. And I feel free to talk to this person, like, and being able to express all my emotions and whatever it goes through my life, etc. And I know that uh, this person will keep that how do you say it? that kind of like objectivity because they are not emotionally involved with me so oh, if that's your criteria that's yeah difficult because you see in a couple there is a lot of emotional involvement and in a friendship there is not there is more objectivity by emotional involvement I mean you know when you're in a romantic relationship like something affects me then affects you or vice, vice versa mm -hmm. right but if you keep an, a certain objectivity, then you are ready to be there for that person, for your partner slash friend, and uh, be a rock for them. But if you get into that emotional roller coaster that your friend or your partner is on, usually partner, yeah, then it can be a problem. Yeah, I see. You what cannot you mean. offer the objectivity that a friendship can offer you. Well, I, mean, I don't know if that came out. I'm kind of like socially disabled, so basically I've never, you know, my experience of friendship has always been, you know, what somebody else was like, oh, just came out of nowhere and offered me kind of. Like mm -hmm. all my friendships happened out of nowhere and I was like shocked, like what's happening? Why is this person talking to me? <laughs> and, you know, it, it was always like I've only had maybe like two friends that were not related to me throughout my life. Mm -hmm. And then there's you, which I consider to be a good, but my best friend, basically. Mm -hmm. And my criteria for friendship is a bit different than yours. I don't know. I, I didn't used to go to my best friends and just, you know, talk at them for about my, my, my problems and things like that. Like, I wouldn't share all of these things. I was more, like, into putting everything inside and just keeping yeah. it there for safekeeping. But for me, the friendship was just, like, spending time together, 
doing things together like they would come over watching scary movies together or having dinner together like you know just hanging out being present and with each other and my friend we would sit there watch uh pool you know pool is it called pool like billiards yeah yeah and we would knit in front of the tv <laughs> like that was a thing that was a and i thought that was so precious or like my other friend would come over and we would all sit at the table and eat from the pot like without the plates mm -hmm. that was a thing so so my definition of friendship fits this mm -hmm. as well because yeah. we hang out and we do things together we spend so much yeah. time together and i like having your company around yeah so to me Same that's here. friendship yeah um what you mentioned is like the challenge i guess in every relationship mm -hmm. because what hurts me might be related to you so i can't come to you and talk about it and vice versa yeah because maybe my problem is related to, to you because mm. we're so involved right that, that's th that's why the question is can friendship and the r romantic relationship coexist that's that's uh, a bit of a conundrum but i don't know. think that means that we're not friends um, well, for the definition I gave, then there is that aspect, you know. Uh, well, we are friends. Maybe we can conclude that uh, you can have uh, still friendship with the person you are romantically involved, but to a certain extent. Which is also healthy, in a way, because you actually need to go out of... Uh, this interaction and get some objectivity from outside so you can cultivate friendship outside the romantic nah, I don't have relationships. Hmm? I don't have energy for anyone else. I know. No, actually you you were talking to a couple of people in the I past. don't consider them friends. Like yeah. they're just Well with COVID people just disappeared pretty much but in general I <laughs> I wouldn't like for me one is enough. Like one good best friend or partner whatever that's enough like the rest are kind of just like you know they come and go like mm -hmm. so I don't know I mean now that I think about it's difficult to define these two things also to be honest like yeah. you're saying as if a friendship is never like involved emotionally but friends can get drama between each other like friends can get pissed at each other it's or, like true. you fucked me over why did you do that you did this to me you did that to me like they're not going to be true. objective with each other it depends Actually. on the people really like yeah. when, whoever you're emotionally involved with you're going to have some kind of you know, like, it depends on the level of intimacy. So yeah. the more intimacy you have with a person, the more likely it is that you are going to be hurt by each other and that you won't be able to mm -hmm. talk about it true to each other, I guess. That's actually true. Yeah. Maybe the romantic relationship is friendship with... Uh, Benefits? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah? If you're lucky. Maybe it can be defined like that. So in this case, well... The question doesn't even, you know, exist. It doesn't have any purpose to, to be. I think the root of a good relationship is friendship. Mm -hmm. Right, right. If you don't have that, then it just, it's just gonna fall over. Yeah. When you're attracted to somebody else, see ya. But once again, you know, we're labeling interactions in the end because uh, we're labeling certain interactions as friend. Friendship, we're living this interaction as romantic relationship, so it's all about labels. In the end, it's it's just interaction. So, but I wouldn't do certain things we do with a friend. So, <laughs> it's a different interaction. So that's why we put the label. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you have a point. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> it's not just me. Um, what else? Like, how, how are you preparing mentally and emotionally for our trip, for our upcoming trip to Italy? Uh, well, I want to keep myself more calm, and uh, this is when my ADHD, my ADHD kicks big time, kicks, mm. kicks in big time. Uh, as I explained once, uh, what happens in my head is just uh, I'm trying to organize things in my head, and uh, trying to understand, you know, what is it that I want to bring to Italy and what is it that I can leave behind. And uh, that's the reason why I make my luggage three times. <laughs> so we were about to leave 
and we didn't and this was back in November and uh, I left most of the luggage there as mm -hmm. it was but ever since I went to revisit the luggage three times yeah and uh, changing my mind so which makes me think that you know all my decisions are never final and that is what screws me over mm -hmm. and um, but yeah, so for me, organizing thoughts and what am I going to bring, it's, it's part of my anxiety. So I'm trying to not to fall into that trap again and yeah. uh, being a little bit like uh, waiting for the last moment. And Which is good. Yeah, I, because really it gives me anxiety. I'm feeding yeah. my anxiety. It's interesting to me because it almost seems like ADHD is kind of like a, an inability to uh, make sense out of a mess. Mm -hmm. So if some things are scattered, you, you're unable to like put them in a way that's like organized. No, that's interesting because this is what the mind is doing. The mind keeps organizing what the mind is naturally in the ADHD, naturally to the ADHD making a chaos out of it, out of the situation. I don't have only one thought. I have 20 or 30 different thoughts running in my head at the same time about making a luggage, oh okay? Gosh. So I, in my mind at the same time, is trying to organize those thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, it's very really draining. Wow. I'm so grateful to have a one-track mind right now. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's very nice to be around you for that reason. Okay. It's very nice to be because you balance that out in me. I'm a little slow. Yeah, you're slower <laughs> and much slower. And um, you wanna know how I pack? Like, you wanna know how it works in my head? Yeah. It's so easy. Okay, I go logistically. Like, I yeah. start at one corner of the room, so it's the closet. So I go through that and I put it all in my bag and then I, you know, move throughout the room. Is there anything else left? Then I go to the bathroom then I go, like, tour the entire house, basically. Yeah. yeah. And, like, okay, I got everything. I'm done. But nice. But you see, if I think about your luggage, for instance, yeah, I get anxious about how you're going to make your luggage because you don't, uh, you have... You know, you have that simplicity, which is not giving you any anxiety. Yeah, just shove things in there. Exactly. And They're that's make it. because I also have OCD. I have okay. this obsessive, compulsive uh, way of making a luggage mm -hmm. that is also adding on my ADHD, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I think, oh my gosh, she's going to put too much because she's always borderline with the weight. And that she's going to create a belly to the luggage, which I don't like. Like overstuffing it, so it yeah, kind of and bulges it, out yeah, at, the, at the front. It has a bulge yeah. all the time. And that, for some reason, uh, bothers me. It bothers my, you know, it irritates me. I mean, like, if it's everything stupid. fits. I mean, exactly. Why Why can't I just relax, you know, the <laughs> thought that, hey, okay, it's, it's going to have a belly, who cares? No, I see that belly, and, and I feel like it has to be, you know, <laughs> just not there. It feels... It doesn't feel, you know, harm in harmony with the universe. I mean, they're gonna beat the hell out of that luggage anyway. Like I know, what's I know. with a little belly, yeah. beer belly? Beer. So I'm trying to deal with that too, actually, okay. to wow. to say, okay, whatever, you know, yeah. you can't, you know, worry about that. Just worry about your luggage yeah. and just um, worry about not forgetting anything essential. Like, that's yeah, nice. but uh, overall, I'm super excited, but also. Uh, kind of a little bit traumatized and uh, we are going to have uh, the COVID test uh, done at the airport. Yeah, and uh, what if I test positive? Like, exactly. What if I have it and I don't know it? Exactly. I'm that's, so nervous. Yeah, that's my thing now and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's bugging me. That thought, that fear. Until me. we get through that test and they say, okay, you can board the plane and they give us like the little tickets, I'm not going to be able to relax. Like there's a part of me that's just like, oh. yeah, Yeah. I'm so scared of coming back from the airport to this apartment and yeah. just like being imprisoned for another <laughs> year. <laughs> but that's why you see, uh, because um, on top of these fears, there's my ADHD and everything. I feel so drained that as soon as I put my butt on the seat, uh, on the plane, I just pass out. And she's like, how, how is it possible? 
I'm just out because <laughs> now at that point there's nothing else I can do. It's over, okay? So oh, okay. <laughs> and I just pass out. Oh, know? that's great. That's that's great. And uh, when the engines go on yeah. and it's about to take off, yeah. that noise yeah. and that movement, it, you know, it's like a cradle for, to me. Oh yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's huge, but it's. Uh, that's great. Yeah, it makes me fall asleep. I'm afraid of flying. When it takes off, like, I'm like, Fuck. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, you have to calm down in one way or another. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's not painful, I heard. No, don't say that. <laughs> That's not... No, we're not talking about that. No. no okay. No. Okay. Anyway. So. Who, who, who else out there is uh, uh, panicky when flying? You know, yeah, just let us know. <laughs> I, I want to know if there is a lot of you. Oh my gosh. But I used to be. I used to be panicky. Yeah. When I was. Uh, and then tell younger. them, like, that little. Just tell them that little story where, you know, your friend was a pilot or something. Oh, my brother in law. My yeah. brother in law was. Uh, yeah, I was coming to Canada for the very first time. First time in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, my ex husband was already here. So I was flying from Rome. And I was flying on a. Air Canada. Uh, at that point, it was Canadian Airlines. Mm -hmm. It was you're still, you know, Canadian Airlines. What did you say? I said you're showing your age. Uh, I'm, I've been showing my age for many, <laughs> on many occasions. But anyway, um, so my brother-in-law was a flight attendant. Uh, actually, we kind of organized it in that way so that he could kind of be there during during the flight. And uh, and then he actually arranged for switching me from the economy class to the business class. So it was empty, half empty, and uh, he moved me there. So it was quite nice. of a very comfortable first time trip to Canada. Mm -hmm. And for the last, very last stretch when it's about to land, I was in the cockpit with the captain. Mm -hmm. So I was able to just see this, you know three-dimensional experience of landing in Toronto. So it was a very nice welcome here in Canada, in a way. And uh, my brother-in-law asked me, how is it going? How are you doing? Are you okay? Because I, sa I told him, look, I'm very scared of flying. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he asked me, and I said, uh, well, I'm just, you know, checking the, the wings every once in a while to see if the engines are working. <laughs> and he said, no, no, don't check the wings. He goes, just check if... Uh, at one point, the captain is running from the head of the plane to the tail of the, uh, of the plane. That's very dangerous. It means the plane is going down. And, uh, okay, he was joking, obviously, but he put me in more fear, okay? You don't say that. What? <laughs> is, this, is this a thing? But I'm not, I'm not scared anymore. That's good. When did you develop your uh, fear of flying? Because you've been flying ever since you were very little. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I was more brave when I was more more little, uh, but the, as I got older, I got more afraid because, I don't know, it's just, just not a bad way to go, I feel like. Uh. Yeah. Maybe it's a past life thing. Who knows? It's interesting because when I was a teenager, I wasn't afraid, but then I got afraid on, around the same time, mm. the same age as you. That's interesting. That's so, it. So, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And... I'll, po I'll post more uh, my eating videos <laughs> before we leave. I might have to refilm one because I messed up the audio. Just check the audio from the camera. Oh, Maybe it's okay. going to be so bad. But anyway, so thank you very much and uh, to the next one. And comment down below. We love your comments and we love your support. We love you. Bye.